in Numbers chapter 16, verse 31 to 33, it says, And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground claimed a sunder that was under them. These were the people of the Israelites as they were wandered in the desert. This person, uh, what's his name, Korah, was leading people against Moses. And it says in verse 32, And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. The grounds just opened up and swallowed all of them. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit. The earth closed upon them, and they perished from among their congregation. So God hates dissension within his um, congregation. God hates that. And um, when that happened in the wilderness, this is exactly what happened to the people who dissented against God. Also, in Numbers chapter 21, verses 6 to 7, it says, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have seen, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is beaten, when he looked upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass, that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. That's a prophecy in itself of Jesus Christ. The serpent represented sin. And these people sinned against the God of their fathers. So what did God do? He allowed the serpents of the wilderness to bite them. And most of lots of them died. And when they realized their sinfulness, they asked Moses and more of God told Moses, Make a serpent of, was it gold or? Make thee a fiery serpent, set it upon a pole. So, a pole with a serpent on it. And he said, anyone who is bitten by a snake, hold this up, let him see it, and he will, be, he will live. Instead of die from the poison, he will live. That is a prophecy of Jesus Christ. Our sins will lead us to death like the serpent's bite. But only through the man who became sin for you and me, Jesus Christ, who was nailed to that pole, nailed to that cross on Calvary, only through him you and I will be able to live. You, will, you and I will be able to overcome the sinfulness of ourselves because he has come and taken that sin on himself and he died on the cross for us. That's what the serpent was for. They were used against his people. So God starts the clean right from within. The people of God, the Christians of today, if we don't take heed of the warnings of God, you would like the Israelites who were bitten by the snake <coughs> till they died. So, Christians, please take heed of this. <coughs> they ignored 
that he is God. In Joshua chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. And she said unto the man, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. This is Rahab of Jericho talking to the two spies. Listen to what she said. And that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. So Rahab is telling the spies that not only Jericho, but all the inhabitants of the land have heard of what happened. Listen to what uh, verse 10 says. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. When did that happen? That was 40 years ago. 40 years ago when they crossed the Red Sea, and then they came to Jordan. Remember the first spies? One of the two of the spies that Moses sent out was Joshua and uh, Caleb. Remember that story? That was 40 years ago. And because of the unbelief, because of their unbelief, God told them that you will be here for another 40 years. I need to train you before you go into the land. So 40 years ago, Rahab had heard about the crossing. And listen what they, they said. He said, not only us here in um, Jericho, but all the occupants of this land in Canaan. Um, and verse 11 says, And as soon as we had heard these things, our heart did melt. They frightened. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man. All our soldiers, they are, they've been beaten already. Just from hearing that your God opened up the Red Sea and you crossed. Because of you, for the Lord your God, listen to what Rahab said, the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and is in earth beneath. That's what the occupants of the land believed 40 years ago. So God had already allowed this news to reach all these people because he knows that he wanted to save all these people. The Israelites were coming in with the God of heaven and the God of this earth. And this God wants to save all these people, the people of Jericho and all those that occupied the land of Canaan. God wanted to save all of them. But did that happen? No. Why? 40 years later, they still have not even sent someone to where they were camping. Go tell the Israelites that their God will be our God too. They continued worshiping their idols. Even though they were frightened of the God of the Israelites, they still continued to worship their idols. Their hearts was hardened by their idol. That even though they frightened them, knew that their God, their idols, cannot open up the Red Sea for them. They still disobeyed God. So we've seen some reasons that force was used. All the land of Canaan was taken over by the Israelites. They were told to kill. They were told not only to kill the man, kill the woman, kill the children, kill all the animals, take over the land, eat the vegetables, the whatever they've planted, live in their houses. Why? Because they have rejected me. They have rejected the God that opened up the Red Sea and they knew about it 40 years ago. Disobedience was the reason why they have to be killed. Not only
only disobedience if I disobey it once. Now, for 40 years, God had worked in their hearts to accept me. I am the God that opened up the Red Sea for my people. I can be your God as well. But they refused. They disobeyed God's call in their lives. I hope that we as Christians are not like that too. We should open up to the truths of the Bible. <clears throat> Only then we will be able to do the right thing, including what we will conclude with this study about the use of force. Is it legal? Is it the right thing to do? We've seen some of the reasons. One, to teach or discipline. When it says, use the rod, use the rod. Meekness, Jesus' word, give the other cheek. It shows that you are meek. You can give, if they want something, you can give the other. But you should ask yourself, is it really if someone slap you on the face, give him the other face to slap? Is that what Jesus meant? Would you allow people to continue to abuse you if you are being abused? Is that what Jesus meant? So, you see, even though things say the words that Jesus spoke, is it really Literal, when someone slap you here or punch you here, you'll give the other face so you have a face to punch. Think. Let's use our common sense. Another reason for the use of force was taking revenge. And Cain did that to his brother Abel. Another was for judgment. God had made judgment on the people of Canaan. He gave them 40 years to repent of their ways, throw away their idols and come and worship the God that opened up the Red Sea for the Israelites. But they didn't. They did not give in to this God, to the true God. So after 40 years they crossed over and God allowed them to be killed. Their door of probation had closed. God gave them 40 years to repent of their ways. I hope it's not, it does not apply to you and me. Our door of probation is going to close at one, one day. We may be still alive, or you may get down in an accident on the road. That's the door of probation closed for you. Have you decided to worship this God the way he wants? Or are you like the occupants of Canaan? Refusing, refusing, refusing. Their judgment closed. <clears throat> it is a commandment of God. That's the other. Thou shall not kill. Do not kill because the commandment tells you that. So you see everything, even though we are coming to a good conclusion, there are still um, um, uh, contrasting each other. Probation ends with touch on that and to overcome the strength of the enemy. We use force to overcome the enemy. And also continual disobedience. If you continue to disobey God, your probation will soon come to an end. That's exactly what happened to Judas Iscariot. For three years he was following Jesus around. For three years he was pocketing the money. He was their finance controller, spending it all for himself. For three years he refused the call of Jesus. At the end, when he realized he was wrong, and he took the money back to whoever gave it to him, but they refused it, then he realized that I've done something very serious. But his door of provision had already closed. You know, ended up, he hung himself, or he threw himself in the, 
he committed suicide. <coughs> Continual disturbance. That's for you and me as Christians. Judas is a good example of Christians of today. We are following Christ all our lives, but we refuse the truth when it's preached to us. This ministry tries to give out the truth, to correct the false doctrines that has flooded Christianity of today. All our teachings is about the truth. Please, do not continue to reject it. So our last day action of Christians, how would a Christian in these last days react to circumstances considering prophecies that persecution will be the order of the day? That's a big question that we have to ask ourselves. We know of the prophecies. We know of the, that Christians will be uh, persecuted in these last days. So, you and me will be persecuted. Are we going to use force? Are we going to kill like they did in Canaan? Are we going to murder? That's something that we will try to um, uh, find out more about in next week's lesson. I think this is a good place to end our, end our study for today and um, um, hopefully that we have gained a little more light today in what we are studying to enable us to come to the right conclusion of whether Christians of today whether the use of force is an option for you and me in trying to avoid the persecution that we know will come on us. So may God bless us and uh, I hope that by next week we will study the word again, dig a little deeper so that we may be enlightened more. Thank you and may God bless you. Let us pray.